I'm creating a database on our new server, but when I try to use automatic memory management, the installer gives me an error saying I can't use more than four gig. My server has 256 gig. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have 265 gig. That would be a very niche amount of RAM you could buy on a server. My server has 256 gigs of RAM. So why can't I use more than four gigs? Is this a bug in the installer? And the answer to that is no, but we have to dig around and look at some history to explain why this interesting anomaly seems to be there. So without further ado, a trip down memory lane. So if you go back to good old Oracle 7, this is uh, Oracle 7, but and versions before it as well, we shipped you a suggested version of your init.ora. Believe it or not, this is what we, we shipped you with. We said that, yep, you'll probably need 200 block buffers. That's your buffer cache. You'll probably need a six megabyte shared pool and maybe an 8K log buffer. It's insane we think of that now, but in reality, back in those days, you know, back in Oracle 7, a, a hefty server would come with, say, 64 meg of RAM. Uh, and so, yeah, using 6 meg, maybe even up to 9 meg of shared pools uh, was a big deal. Memory management was very, you know, was actually easy because there's pretty much three things you set in Oracle 7. Block buffers, shared pool size, and generally you didn't touch the log buffer, but you, you, know, you may set. There's three memory areas. So we gave you three parameters to set it. It was easy to do. When we modernized the database, actually gave you an installer to install the database, that mindset continued. When we got to about Oracle 8, there was still only about five pools that you would actually set. Oracle 9, maybe. Yep. So you'd have shared pool, buffer cache, Java pool, large pool. Um, and often people didn't have Java. They weren't using Java in the database. So generally shared pool, buffer cache, and maybe, maybe large pool. Probably in that sort of eight, nine, 10 time frame. You know, we sort of recommended that, yeah, this is probably what you do because the database evolved. At the time, we just called it, that's memory management. Nowadays, we call it manual shared memory management, MSMM. That's how it used to be. Shared pool size, DBK size, pretty much you were good to go. But of course, the world moves on. Then we started introducing things. This is about the 8-0 timeframe, like the, maybe even 7-3, uh, the keep cache and the recycle cache in addition to the buffer cache. Then Java came along in 8.1. Then the large pool came along for parallel query and other bits and pieces as well. And then when we had multiple table spaces, multiple block size table spaces, well, we needed a cache for each of those. So we had those caches. Then streams came along, you had a streams pool. Then we had result caching came along as we spoke about earlier. Then we had full database caching, uh, big table automatic caching. They required some information. In memory came along in 12102, so the in memory cache, 18C rapid ingest uh, inserts, so with the mem optimized pool. Memory management all of a sudden is getting more and more complex. And with our objective at Oracle saying, well, we want to make things simpler, asking you to set what 20 parameters carefully to get them is obviously just ridiculous. Pretty much since what, about 12, I think, maybe even earlier, we said, look, this is the way to go. We want you to just be able to set two parameters, the SGA and the PGA. That's it. Everything that's shared goes in the SGA. That includes your shared pool, your streams, all, all that kind of stuff. You can all just go in the SGA. And PGA for your private memory areas, just give us a total and we'll manage that across all the sessions that need PGA. We call it Automatic Shared Memory Management, ASMM, not to be confused with a double SM, which is Segment Space Management. Acronym hell here at Oracle. The SGA looks like this. And of course, well, now we have a challenge because it's not just the shared pool anymore. And so to address this, the way we did it was we broke up the SGA into what we call granules. They are chunks of memory. So rather than you just saying, give me a gigabyte of memory, we actually say when you say the SGA is a gig, we say, let's break it up into, I think they're typically 16 meg, um, depends on the size of the SGA, but we actually break it up into little chunks. In that way, we can say, yep, one chunk is the shared pool. Another chunk, the shared pool, next chunk, buffer cache, next chunk, shared pool, buffer cache, et cetera. And the beauty of this is, just because you've nominated a single size, this now becomes fluid. If I'm doing lots and lots of index reads, et cetera, and my buffer case seems to be a little bit small for that activity, the database can dynamically reallocate some of the shared pool to become buffer cache. And the great thing is it doesn't just have to work like this. It doesn't just have to say, well, I now need to go flush out, say, 16 meg of shared pool, because that's obviously expensive to do, to find some space for the buffer cache. What I can actually do is a single granule could actually contain a little bit of buffer cache and a little bit of shared pool. 
And in fact, if you Google for KGH no access, some smart people have done some blogging on this in the past, Tanel and a few others, that shows you what we can do is as we flush stuff out, for example, at the shared pool, we'll tag that as being not available for the shared pool in, anymore, even though the entire granule still is a shared pool granule, and it's tagged as not being available because we're going to put some buffer cache stuff in there. So a single granule might contain both. Very, very cool stuff. The fact that we can now mix and match memory inside the SGA. And of course, at Oracle, some bright spark in there said, you know, wouldn't it be cool if rather than giving an SGA parameter and a PJ parameter, what if we just had one parameter? Because it sounds really attractive. What if we just had one number to rule them all? You tell users, if you've got 100 gig on your machine, just tell us 60 gig, we'll look after it. And that became this thing, what we call automatic memory management. One number, that's all you have to type in. And it sounds great. It sounds like a really cool idea. But the reality is they're really different uses. SGA is all about memory that's shared amongst all the processes. It's in one spot that all processes share concurrently in the database. PGA is not. PGA is private to individual processes. And therefore, it's no longer trivial to mix and match that memory because in one hand, shared memory, everything that's got an Oracle attached to it is it's eligible to be accessed by it. Just because one becomes buffer cache, one becomes shared pool, you're simply changing the usage there, but you're actually not changing who's allowed to see it. All the Oracle processes can see it. Whereas if I want to map from memory, which is PJ and migrate it to become SGA, all of a sudden I've got memory, which is owned by a single process that I need to take off that process and give it to the SGA or vice versa. If I want to give some SGA to the PGA, I've now got to take that shared memory, make sure no one's allowed to use it anymore and pin it to a particular process. And that comes with implications at the operating system level. And in fact, here's two very good MOS notes about it. If you turn on automatic memory management, then you don't get to use large pages. And anyone that's a DBA knows that large pages is an absolute performance bonus for the database. In these eras of large servers, not using large pages can absolutely kill you with page tables and performance. So large pages is a absolute no brainer for any reasonable size server. And therefore, if you turn on automatic memory management, you've just shot yourself in the foot. Or you could argue that we shot ourselves in the foot by offering it to you. And similarly, on certain platforms, for example, Solaris, which has a nice little thing called optimized shared memory management, you don't get that because it competes with the way automatic memory management wants to work in terms of robbing information uh, memory from processes from one to another. Yes, it was a cool idea, but in reality, you could argue that we didn't really think about the implications of doing so because the moment you turn on automatic memory management, you don't get to use large pages. It makes no sense to use automatic memory management if you have a large SGA, because for a large SGA, you definitely want large pages. So what happens if you try to set it more than four gig, in which case we'd want you to use large pages, we say, no, we're not gonna let you do it. And we'd force you to go back to automatic shared memory management. So to sum up all that, to answer in a, in a too long didn't read answer to that question, my rule is real simple. Always use ASMM. Specify SGA target, PGA aggregate target, forget about it. I think they just work absolutely fine. And generally, unless you get into some sort of buggy area where you find your uh, shared pool buffer cache dramatically, you know, sort of zooming back and forward in terms of resize operations, which can hurt CPU, I've never really seen it, but I've, I've seen people claim it before. But unless you're hitting a bug in that thing, just go with SGA target, PGA ag target, and you'll be good to go.